we are here on the Shunk stand here at Mac 2024 to see what's on show. So, Marcel, let's get started on your range of tool holders. What have you brought to the show and what are you showcasing? So here we have a little bit of everything, uh, far from all of it. Uh, we're starting very basic, mechanical. Uh, basic doesn't mean lack of features. So we have one of the best ranges of mechanical uh, tool holders in terms of runouts and precision, which is all we are about. Uh, then we move into our new range of hydraulics tool holder. So the entry level called Tendo Silver coming out now. Uh, slightly lower price than our traditional range, the P range, the technical range. Uh, what we have in here, some very cool features. We have a new hydraulic tool holder that replaces a direct replacement for uh, heat shrink. So you can do that, which brings you all the hydraulic uh, advantages of it with the same profile. And on the very top, we have the iTendo, which is our creme de la creme uh, hydraulic holder with sensors inside for doing very sophisticated machine pathing analysis. So what sort of industries would you say a tool holder like that with all its new features and abilities would be good for? So this was initially designed for aerospace. So when you're doing very complicated parts that we can never have, uh, the, the, part of the, the cost of the parts is extremely high and the risk of losing money is too high, that's when that kicks in. However, we found that customers are using for all sorts of novelty things. So we found one of our customers using that to check the health of the spindle now. So it's just coming out. Many people are using it for different things. We're still to learn with customers how they use it for. But it's great our customers are even showing you guys it what was. you can be used it for. Is. It is. And, and I wasn't there missing and like, why are you using it? Like, really? Cool. Let's put it in. And, let's, and, and all we want to do now is work with customers in fairness, we sell these as a semi-prototype because we want to work with the customers in developing a database and methods of using these things. But it's great how you're not there just to tell the customer what you need. No. You're taking their experience and their advice on board to help you guys make stuff that customers need. Exactly that. Now, obviously, that's your tool holding range. So, But let's move on to your grippers. So here is a little bit of everything. Again, this is not necessarily an automation show, but automation is becoming a big present thing. Uh, um, the presence of automation in machine tuning is becoming enormous. So starting here, we have a very simple, what we call the MTB, machine tending bundle. So off the shelf, you have double gripper, all the valve that you need built in. This goes in the end of an arm, normally a collaborative robot. Uh, and then you have a vice, um, Nomadic vices because if you're going to automate the landing, the putting of your component, the work holding has also to be automatic. So two versions of automatic vices, all of these things come off the shelf with all the controls you need. It's drop and plug and play. Then we have a little bit of uh, end of farming here, a little bit more sophisticated. Some mechatronics, some uh, magnetics, uh, some uh, nomadic operated things, two changes quite hard to explain in a very short video, so we're going to kind of just brush this over and we can go maybe into something that is well, more... Well, essentially, just before we move on, you have a grip of your solution for everybody. If it has to be bolted down and it has to be moving, there will be a solution from Sean. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. So let's move on, because obviously you've got some demos running right now. So, yeah. so first off, let's start with the, I don't know, I might say this wrong, the KUKA. Round yeah, yeah, yeah. And what are you showcasing? Don't upset our customer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what are you showcasing on here? So here is just trying to give some real life uh, examples of what we saw there. So we have two applications here. We are slightly different. So here we have a hydraulic expendable mandrel made for grinding, normally grinding tools. So this is traditionally a very difficult thing to automate because they are very tight tolerances. And robots are extremely precise, but they do struggle with microns. So this has a level of compliance that is very good for automation. And then over here, we have a pneumatic vise, again, showing that if you need to machine tend, you need to have some sort of automatic solution on this end. And on the very middle here, we have the end of arm for the robot, which is a mechatronic uh, gripper, which doesn't sound like much, but is not traditionally used in machine tending because it's such an aggressive environment. And this is an, a mechatronic grip, an electronic gripper, with a very large scope of flexibility who will survive abuse from a CNC environment. And I'd just like to say before we move on that, you already said it, but you found an automation solution for something that is really, really 
hard to automate. One of the unique points of us, Shunk, is we come from the wear coding and we move into automation. No other company can do end-to-end -end from wear coding to automation and knowing both ends is really important to make them gel. So essentially, if you've got, so anything around your part, you have a solution for. Indeed we will. Now, let's move on because obviously, We've got a lot to get through Yes, here. we do. So what are you showcasing on this demonstration? So this is a little bit more of the same. So we're just showing a little bit of machine uh, tending. In this case, it's just a long stroke gripper with pneumatic grippers and how you can be creative using a fender farm. So this is effectively more of that. And the next stage, I think, is where all of those things come together into a very nice consolidated solution. Now this is something, just before you start, this is something I've actually never seen before until we spoke a little earlier. Right. So talk us through what is happening in here. So there's quite a bit happening here. So what we have, it's on the end of the arm, we have uh, a gripper with a tool changer, which you can change the jobs for the end of the arm of the robot automatically. But the start of the show truly is, and I'm going to cut you out just a second and come to this side, it's this guy. So here we have an auto jaw changing system. Now that's the part I'd never seen before. Right. So if you ever try to automate machine tending, which is what kind of what we were looking over there, vertical mini machines are fairly easy to automate. You can palletize, it's a flat bed, you know, it's a more flex flexible and uh, easy thing to approach. When it comes to lathes, and if you ever try to do that, machine tending meaning that just put the parts inside and out of the lathe, it's fairly straightforward. When you need to change the job though, you need to change your jaws. And to change your jaws, that was never possible until very recent. And this is what we're showing here. You can have a massive range of jaws, a massive range of components going through the same machine with the same robot. So essentially, if you've got a customer who is running batch work, but does, doesn't quite have the batch numbers to run through the night on one part, you can now run a batch of a selection of parts because yeah. you can now change the machine automatically. And extremely versatile. So one of the solutions we've done, they were running 96 different components, 70 millimeters to 250 millimeters in the chuck, and squares, three jaws, pendulum jaws, pie jaws, all going through the same solution, all going through the same machine. So it, it does become a matter eating beast, really. And that just allows people who couldn't really do overnight lights out running, now have the ability exactly. because it's not all about the numbers of parts, it's multiple exactly. parts. Exactly, so now you had a high diversity of small batches, like you said. You can run that for 72 hours and attend it. And that, is, like I said, never seen that before and yeah. that is really impressive. Now, we're gonna move on to your, and I got this wrong a minute ago <laughs> and I'm gonna try and get it right this time, your pneumatic system. Yes, so this, on the face of it, is nothing new. It's a zero-point system. Many people are familiar with them. What is new about this one, it has air through itself. So why does that matter? We've been talking about machine automation through our little journey here. You we established you do have to have a pneumatic device on top of your uh, automation to, to make it work. But how do you operate a pneumatic device once you're using zero points? Well, you need one of these things. So once this gets dropped in here, the air will go through the zero points into the pneumatic device automatically for you with no intervention. Now, we've seen before that obviously vices can be controlled automatically, which you need for automation. Yep. But something, again, not seen before is quick change over jaws because yeah. you took quick change over jaws and made it even quicker. This is, this is quite remarkable, really. So I'll try to do this one-handed. Let's <laughs> see how it goes out there. So I just lock this thing, press off a button, nice and locked. Uh, and I can open and close. So air is now going through so there. So that's what you would normally see so in an automation that's system. Done. That's done. That's the normal. But now I need to go from my square bits to my not square bits. So I need to change these guys. One, two, three, done. And just how quick and simple that was. One handed, you weren't even looking for most no, of that no. and you still did it. So that just shows, and, and I think it's, it's something we need to talk about a little bit is, obviously in the industry at the moment, you've got the skill gap and the, you can't get people. So 
the easy, the quicker and easier you can make something, you can get an apprentice to do that now in seconds. Where before, there might be if you were changing the jaws normally, they might get a tooth wrong, so the jaws don't. Clap. So again, it's not all about that, but it's just about the quick, the simple, the easy. I think the best way to summarise of everything that we see here today and and what we do is. If you have something in your factory waiting to be cut, you should talk to us. Brilliant. I love we will that. make it being cut I love very that. quickly. So let's move on now to your. Uh, so this is just a, this is a very your. simple thing. We're just showing that we do do lathes. It's quite hard to demonstrate them in real life. <laughs> uh, so basically, we're just showing some of the specs. Lightweight chucks. These are the new generation. Very low moments of inertia. Uh, I don't think I will be able to do a quick change on these one one handed. But I will do my But we, we, can, we can show that, we yeah, can show don't that, do don't that. Right. Never mind. Um, but this is just a quick release kind of system. There you go. <laughs> okay, Nearly there. got it. <laughs> Cheated. And but, this range of jaws. And then, obviously, so we've done waves. We've done zero point vices. Automation, four, combination. Five axis. Five axis. So... What are you showing? And a bit of the menu as well. Yeah. So it's not only about automation. We still have lots of manual things going on. So we're starting from this big fella here. So 5X is dedicated vice. Pushes your part right up. Uh, very unique to us. The clamping is very close to where you're machining. So it's not going to have a lot of momentum. So where all the force is applied where you want it to be applied. And just quick, why... On a five-axis machine, would you want a taller vice over just a standard? So as your part sits proud, you have access to all faces. And then obviously, five-axis vices with So the now we have jaws. just the normal centric vices. Uh, quick change, we can talk a little bit about jaws in a second over there. Multi-station vices becoming a thing. We have a massive range of special jaws that will comply. Uh, so. I think it's a good time to talk about these little two fellas we're doing a Mac exclusive. Nice. So we're doing just for this month, just for things starting here, we're going to have a $5.99 and $6.99 for a vice that is ready to go, taking a box, putting the machine and start running and cutting. Who doesn't like a deal? Right. So work holding. So this is a little bit more sophisticated. We have a combination of multi sessions with pneumatics, uh, just showing that something can be customized to your needs. Uh, and then here again, we go into a little bit of our special jaws. So you have pendant jaws, uh, special, we call quentes, but special uh, gentle jaws on your component. And for me, my favorite, the quick release jaw. So, if so you I need think to summarize everything we've just talked about there is, if you've got a part that needs to be clamped, you guys can clamp if it. If you needed to cut it, <laughs> right, if it's sitting there waiting to be cut, and there's a queue, everything here is free for you. Now, <laughs> we're going to move on to the next bit, which I'm not even going to attempt to know right. what this is, because I really need to lean on your expertise right. here. So, this what is just to at? give a bit of a flavor that we are not just about work holding and basics automation. So. Difficult to visualize, but we are really growing into the e-mobility sector. So, which you can define in a few ways, but very, very simple. Making batteries, making battery packs, and making the rotors, the motors that go inside your car. So one of the things that make the electric cars very efficient is the way that they went from just rolling copper in a big wire thing into something called hairpin. So we have a solution which will look like nothing to most people, but these will pick, bend, and position the hairpins into the rotor. This guy here is made to pick the batteries and make the battery packs. And one thing that they require a lot is compliance, flexibility, uh, customization. So this is a gripper that can go into a gantry, um, a robot with built-in compliance. So it's just the special and wonderful things of automation that we can deliver. And it's just showing what you guys, you're not just all about work holding, you do you're into other sectors We as are well. into efficiency and productivity. Like I said, if you have something waiting to be done, we'll get it You'll done do for it. you. So, two more sections to go. Oh, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. So, this Just, is a great we're looking talking about. Yeah, right. So basically, <laughs> we supply jaws even to non-chunk vices. So you can get uh, vice jaws, you can get chunk, um, you can get chuck jaws 
for non shunk chucks, you can get vice jaws for non shunk vices. And we have one of the most complete ranges of uh, jaws. So from grip jaws, soft jaws, centric jaws, I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can kind of get the picture. Uh, they will find, a, you will find a solution here for some of your uh, problems, which I think is a nice little segue for this one. Talking about finding solutions for very real problems. Um, this is a very simple, very cheap solution uh, for a very uh, big problem for automation. So if you're gonna do machine tending, you have a legacy machine, as many of us do, what does that mean? Machine was built in a time the automation was not forefront of our mind, and you don't have air to the table. And I think I repeated myself enough, we need pneumatic vices to automate. So how do you push air to that pneumatic vice on a machine that you don't have air through the table? Well, this beautiful little va uh, valve here, you would have a robot operating this unit. So you have a coupler, coupler here, and I will try to be as strong as a <laughs> robot here. And as you push this, you can now operate your vice. Once that thing is operated, the robot can move away, valve locks in position, vice stays energized. And like you Simple. said earlier, it's a, I'm not going to say a cheap solution because that wouldn't be right, but compared to retrofitted exactly. and if it can be retrofit so because some machines... First question, can you put that through your table? And if you can, how much would that cost you? 30, 40, 50,000 pounds? You know, for a fraction of that, you have a solution. And again, it's all about that solution. It's yes. all about that solution to make you more productive, more efficient, and essentially keep them machines running. Get stuff made. Well, Marcel, thank you for an absolutely delightful and in-depth <laughs> tour. Your knowledge astounds me on everything. I fake well. So, <laughs> again, thank you very much, no and I look forward to the next one. Thank you.